Resveratrol was a proof of concept molecule back in 2003, the first of its kind that could mimic caloric restriction, mm. make mice healthy on a high fat Western diet. And it was, it was a great proof of, of something that we were trying to figure out. And it led to drugs that went into humans that looked really promising. Um, I got embroiled in a scientific and a, a corporate war. So in the case of Pfizer, they put out a scientific paper that said essentially everything that David has said is wrong. Okay, and then that was a great headline. Harvard scientists started companies is wrong. Okay, and, and you know, and then I spent about a week in bed saying, fuck the world. You know, why am I doing this? Why am I working so hard for society if they don't care? But I worked my way out of bed. I thought, let's dig deep and see if they're right mm. or if we're right. And so for another three years, we, we really worked hard in my lab at Harvard to test whether we were right. So the question was, with this Pac-Man that spools the DNA, does resveratrol work on it or is it working on something else? And that to scientists is really important because sure. if it's not working on this, all the drugs that we're trying to work on this are probably working um, the wrong way that we thought. To cut a long story short, what we found and published in the journal Science, which is one of the top you can do, um, and I say that because it's validated science, is that we showed that resveratrol does bind to the Pac-Man and it is responsible for this. And we now have new information that we haven't published, but I'll, I'll tell your audience about it. We've made a mouse that is resistant to activation of the Pac-Man. Hmm. We can tweak the enzyme just in one amino acid in that protein out of about a thousand that blocks this movement activation. It's normally chewing like this, but if we add resveratrol to a normal mouse, it'll do that. To our mutant mouse, it's this. And which is better? What the rapid munching? Rapid or? munching is better. Okay. Because the rapid was, res we think, was responsible for the health benefits and the longevity So effect. what you're showing is by slowing it down, you cause real problems. And thusly, if you have resveratrol in there and get it munching really fast, that you've done something positive. Right. And our mutant mouse should be resistant to the benefits of resveratrol if we're right. But if Pfizer is right, then resveratrol should still provide benefits even though this enzyme because is Because it's blocked. working on some other Some thing. other way. Got it. So the mouse that could not be sped up, the mutant mouse, does not live longer when given resveratrol on its high fat diet. Interesting. So that will be the, the punctuation mark, the FU, we were right. <laughs> um, but, but interestingly, the world has moved on, mm. right? Well, I'm, I'm left to clean up the pieces. Right. Yeah, so, and when you say the world has moved on, you're talking about people like me who just assume that it was garbage and that it's not real and... Right. Okay, so um, you've said that the only supplement you take is vitamin D. Um, so how are you getting resveratrol in the system? Is it a drug? Do you have to have it prescribed? Uh, well, I'm taking resveratrol. I have... Um, and would we call that a supplement? Product. Sure. And it's commercially available? Uh, it is, if it's a legitimate seller mm. and it's 98 plus percent pure, it, it seems to be mm. similar to what I take. And ballpark, how much do you take? Um, I take a teaspoon into my yogurt. That's probably close to a gram. Every day? Every day, yeah. Okay. Uh, resveratrol, roughly a gram. Are you taking NMM or is NMN or is that just your dad? Uh, both of us. Okay. And Resveratrol is probably not going to hurt me, and uh, it may very well help my cardiovascular system. It seems to be really important for the cardiovascular system, like, and I'm just kind of wondering, do you know why? Why is it? Uh, we, we have a number of ideas, and resveratrol is a dirty molecule, so there's not just one way it works. Um, so two ins definitely are involved. We now have a mouse that's mutant for the resveratrol activation of CERT1, so we now see that some, some aspects like endurance of resveratrol seem to be through CERT1. So one of the effects is through CERT1's anti-inflammatory actions in the lining of the, of the blood vessels, the endothelial cells. Oh. Yeah, okay. that seems to be important. And uh, there's other aspects also in DNA repair as well. Mm -hmm. um, infiltration of macrophages in there seems to be dampened. And we also looked at oxidative stress in those arteries of those mice treated, and it was way down in the resveratrol mice. Yeah, with the rhesus monkeys, with the, you know, basically like, you know, completely reversing that 40% aortic stiffness, that's like pretty, it's pretty dramatic effect. It, it, so it was, is, and, and so yeah, I think resveratrol, it's, people are, you know, always a true, is it not, 60 Minutes did a story, and then there was an argument about how it was working, 
And so people are confused about the molecule, and I, I still stand by it because the results, like you say, in animals, and in, there are clinical studies now yes. that, that are really positive in, in humans. Uh, not all of them, sometimes it has no effect. There was one study where it interfered with um, endurance exercise. Um, yeah, don't really understand that. that. But that foreman was kind of shown to do something similar where right. it prevented mitochondrial adaptations. Yeah, I mean, maybe, what, Rhonda, what's oh, maybe happening is that if you're dampening antioxidant or dampening free radicals too much, yes. you're actually losing that benefit. Hormetic effect. Exactly, right. the mitohormesis. But, um, but I haven't seen any downside. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm an N of 1, in, as you would say, in a clinical trial. I've had my heart checked out with a 3D movie, uh, MRI. My heart looks like it's 20, it's got no sign of aging. So it doesn't seem to be doing myself and my dad any harm. So How long have you been taking it? Oh, gee, since 2003. Wow. And you take about a gram, give or so, yeah. a day.